All of us, I think, have been blessed by the examples of faith, hopefully by many in our lives, persons of great character and integrity who lived out and showed us the great love of God and the devotion to the church. This past week, we commemorated many of them that are now saints on All Saints Day, reflecting upon those men and women of every age who have lived out the faith with great fidelity and integrity. And yet all of us know and feel that lack of faith and integrity. It goes on in each of us interiorly in the struggle that we have with sin. We know how it affects the world, the horror of the terrorist attack this week in New York, those eight killed, how their lives of their families are forever changed, those injured who's with their loved ones continue to suffer from the effects of evil and sin. Our readings today look to that dynamic, to that continuing battle of grace and sin with a particular focus to those like me who are called to be ministers of God's grace to others. But of course, it is applicable to all of us who are meant to share the good news. Our first reading from the book of Malachi says, Oh, now, O priests, if you do not listen, if you do not give glory to my name, says the Lord of hosts, I will send a curse upon you, making you contemptible. Harsh words but necessary ones issued by the prophet in the name of the Lord. It's the same theme that is addressed in our gospel today. Our Lord speaks to the scribes and the Pharisees. For the last three Sundays, we've heard those feeble attempts by them to trap or to trick Jesus. Their malice and their ill motives have been exposed. In today's language, we would say the Lord now calls them out. He exposes their hypocrisy, telling the people not to follow their bad example, and then calling all to humility. <laughs> and here's the call for us today, to be humble, to seek an honesty that acknowledges that every good thing we have ever done or could ever do is only made possible by the grace of God that all is his gift to us, that it is only in humility that we can be honest and holy to recognize and acknowledge our need for God for everything so that we can then be authentic disciples. Certainly, again, to me as a priest reading these words, they are compelling, but they need to be heard by all of us. In baptism, each of us have been brought into the priestly people of God. And in the sacrament of confirmation, each of us received the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to be able to witness to the faith. And yet, sadly, that can be distorted by our sin. The Lord readily acknowledges the sinful behavior of those whom he has called to lead his people. But the gospel begins with the Lord saying to the people, do and observe all that they tell you. Hmm. At first, this might not make sense to us, but if we look a bit closer, it's a great revelation because if the teaching of the church, its magnificent value and worth were dependent upon the sinlessness of her preachers, there would be no one preaching. <laughs> For all of us are sinners. And each of us fails in some way to live up to the call that God has given us. And certainly that includes me. <laughs> but even my sin cannot mar the truth and the inestimable value of the wisdom and the beauty and the liberating value of God's word. And it is that beauty and it is that truth that is meant to always be preached because it alone has the power to save us and to change us. And here's where we see the genius of St. Paul in our second reading. He is, of course, an eloquent preacher. 
but he is even more eloquent and ardent disciple. In that second reading, he states how he was gentle when he was among the Thessalonians, that he cared for them with affection like a nursing mother, and that is why they received his word. And so here's a lesson for us today, that our sharing of the life and love of God is not for the most part to be made in well-versed arguments or persuasive speech, but simply in love. The lesson for us today is to listen and to obey all that is taught by the church, that call to love, not be distracted by the infidelity of some who have disobeyed and disgraced that call but to keep our focus on the message itself, which is nothing less than the infinitely wise and loving Word of God. For the lesson for all of us today is a very simple one, and it comes to us at the end of the Gospel from the words of Jesus himself. The greatest among you must be your servant, for whoever exalts himself will be humbled but whoever humbles himself will be exalted.